Hello, hello, hello! Hi, 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 and welcome back to Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney, the Ace Attorney Trilogy, whatever you want to call it. Hello! Uh, we're back once again, uh, continuing Turnabout Goodbyes. Last time we left off, uh, shenanigans went down. We, hello, Pitch Town, hello, hello. Uh, we... What did we do last time? I'm honestly trying to remember. Man, I just remembered and then I forgot. Uh, we got into the courtroom. Trial day. Day two trial. Went to the courtroom. Discovered about Manfred von Karma. The old mentor and the current prosecutor on this case of Miles Edgeworth. So that's fun. That's cool. I'm just taking my morning bit. Oh, it is... Man, it is in the late afternoon, Page Town. What? Oh my god. So we So we fought against Manfred von Karma. We interrogated Lotta Hart. Discovered that uh Phoenix, not Phoenix, Miles could have not been the person to shoot the gun. And now, uh, after some more investigating and discovering the caretaker of the boat uh, of the boathouse. We are once again feeling the threads connect back to an incident uh, of DL6, uh, those many moon, uh, those many days ago, many days, many years ago, uh, which involved the death of Gregory Edgeworth, Miles Edgeworth's father. Oh my God, there's a lot about in this game. Page Town, I hope you're doing wonderful. Oh my God, please remember to take meds next time. Oh goodness. <laughs> Well, at least you've remembered now, so that's better than completely forgetting, I guess. Uh, but without further ado, let's, let's not waste any more time. Let's get right back into it, shall we? Turn about goodbyes. We have not already spent 20 hours in this game. That can't be true. I do, I just forgot because my routine got interrupted. What did it get interrupted by? What happened? Uh, December 27th, 10 a.m. District Court, courtroom number three. Oh, well, there's Manfred. How you doing, buddy? Court is now in session for the trial of Mr. Miles Edgeworth. Hi, Judge. How you doing? How you doing, buddy? I hope your bald head is doing just fine. The defense is ready, Your Honor. Manfred von Karma, you look just as annoyed and pissed off as you did the other day. Okay, are we playing the I'm a busy man shtick again? Work. Very well. Apparently the prosecution is also ready. Who's the judge here anyways? Mr. Von Karma, your opening statement. Come out of the room, I put my water and grab my meds. House bathroom, but my dog already up, and I said hi to the dog. My mind already thought I made this happen, I didn't realize until I was in math class. Oh no! You know what? At least I got interrupted by a dog and not something worse. You know? At least it was the dog. Er, very well, no opening statement, so. Okay, you're just wrapped around his little finger, aren't you? Uh, uh not so fast, judge. I was taking a meaningful pause before speaking. Well, that is a long and not so meaningful pause, my good sir. R right, of course. A prediction. Today's trial will end three minutes from now. That is some fast trial work, man. Why do you think that? <sighs> Uh, hello, Kagami. <gasps> we found it. Yes, we did. We did find it. How you doing, Kagami? Order, order. Mr. Von Karma, what is the meaning of your statement just now? I figured you were getting better. Oh, buddy. Oh, I'm so sorry. I hope you get well soon. I, I feel your pain. I just got off of being sick, and it is not fun. <laughs> 
Running wanted to die because it was hit with double whammy. Oh no, what happened? Bah, must you question everything? It'll be over in three minutes. We have no time to waste. So you can also use your to stab yourself. Oh, Kagami, I'm so sorry, darling. Well, please make sure you're getting some rest and you're eating well at the very least. That sounds so bad. I wish the best of luck to you, hon. I call my witness now. R right. I call my witness, my decisive witness to the stand. It's that mysterious boat shop owner. Witness, state your profession. Everybody teams up with you. Oh no. Oh god, this guy again. Hey! <laughs> hey! I'm the proprietor of the restaurant, the White Noodle at Gord Lake. Duh. Hey, I also rent boats. At the night of the incident, you were in the boat rental shop, correct? My body's been dead every week now. It's like, oh, buddy. <laughs> Great voice. <laughs> Glad you like it. Yep, yep, I was. Please testify. Wait a second. We still haven't heard who this old guy is. Uh, raise an objection. objection. We don't know who the fuck you are. W wait a minute. The witness hasn't stated his name yet. Objection. How the fuck do you pronounce Nil? Uh, it's technically pronounced Nihil, I guess, because it's, you know, nihilism. I always pronounce it as Nil, because Nils is an actual name, N-I-L-S. Uh, but I think the way you're supposed to pronounce it is Nihil, so it would be Nihil Lights. Yeah, like the river. <sighs> But also, famously, on this channel, I am sucky at pronunciations of any word, let alone my own name, so... Denial. <laughs> yeah! You're in denial! Exactly! I had predicted this trial would end in three minutes. So what's true? What the hell do I say? Uh, Niall. Uh, Niall, Nil. I say either one. Yeah. I've also heard if you really want to be, like butchering a name. I think Nihil is another way you could probably try to pronounce it. So like, go with whichever one feels, uh, oh my god, words. Go with whichever one feels best in your mouth. Like, whichever one you can say and sounds the best to you, go with that one. I'll answer to any of them. Stop asking such trivial questions and cooperate. Yeah, right. It's like Rambo's name, so many pronounce it. There isn't a correct one. Yeah, exactly. See, they get it. I've said nil because I've heard you say it. Nihil was something a friend in the stream said. It was embarrassing. <laughs> Nihil, Nihil, Nil. However you want to pronounce it, all of them are correct in my mind. The witness will state his name. Calling you the Nile River. See, perfect. You found your one. Me, where? Not really sure. Yep. What do you mean? My, my memory. Your Honor. Nihil just sounds wrong. Yeah. <laughs> the witness does not remember anything beyond the point of the last several years. Ergo, he cannot recall his own name. Oh my God, he's an amnesiac. You can't recall, you say? Yes, but the incident in question took place three days ago. He can testify. Very well. Let us hear his testimony and then shall we witness? All right, witness testimony the night of the murder. Okay, if Nihil doesn't sound right, then go with Niall or Nil. Both are fine. <laughs> It was the night of the 24th, just after midnight, yep. I was in the restaurant where I uh, rent boats, as usual. Then I heard a bang, yep. When I looked out the window, I saw the boat just a-floating on the lake. Then I heard another bang. 
Just the very day, the boat comes back to shore and a man walks by my window. Okay, that is so vague. Hmm, very well. I would like to begin the cross-examination. Ah! There is no thing to question in my witness's testimony. Ergo, no need to cross-examine. Besides, there are only ten seconds left before our three minutes are up. <laughs> uh-huh. Judge, your verdict, now. Uh, yes. Um, excuse you? M Mr. Ride? And bitch, uh, let me cross-examine this old senile man! What are you saying? Of course I'll cross-examine the witness. Mm, very well, you may begin. Ah! Bro, my god! Von Karma, you are dramatic! It's just a cross-examination- He's hiding something. Obviously so, but... We want answers! Yes, exactly! Excuse me, Mr. Von Karma? Three minutes just passed. Does that mean you're dead now? Like, you acted like someone shot you. What? I see. Well then, let us just take our time. You may cross-examine the witness. Let's go! Cross-examination. This man ain't right. He's sick, I think. <laughs> I don't know if you're referring to the caretaker or Manfred von Karma. Either way, it's funny as fuck. It was the night of the 24th, just after midnight. Yep. Alright, we're gonna press everything. Just after midnight, you say? Yep, yeah, just around in. Are you sure? Pretty sure, yep. Yeah. The man who's pissed off about three minutes? Von Karma, understood. He is probably sick in the head, let's be honest. When I talked to you yesterday, you were rather vague about the time. I'm surprised you seem so sure about it today. Did you fall asleep on us? The fuck? Oh my god, shut up, Von Karma! Oh my god! I asked him and he remembered. Isn't that right? Oh! Dude, don't glare at me like that! I, I remembered it clearly, I did. Yep. You see? Continue. I was in the restaurant where I usually rent boats. Renting boats at a restaurant? Delicious. Do you eat the boats? Are they like sushi boats? That would be fun. Is there anyone who can verify that? Well, I guess Polly could. Th that's not good enough for a court of law. Mr. Royd, exactly what's good not good enough? Uh, your honor, this Polly is a parrot. A parrot? Dude looks like he was about to pop a blood vessel with how pissed he was. He... He probably did, let's be honest. Von Karma, Von Karma is just mad. Just mad all the time. Don't be so hard on the girl, Keithy boy. Keith? <laughs> the prosecution concedes that we cannot provide the witness was in the shop. Witness, please continue. Then I heard a bang. Bang, bang, na, da, na, da. Uh, and where did this bang seem to come from? Well, like I figure. Are you certain? Yep. Good. Continue. When I looked out the window, I saw a boat just like a float on the lake. <sighs> Was there someone on the boat? It was pretty far out there, I couldn't see it clearly. But I figured there were two men out there, yep. But you couldn't see them clearly. Yep, at the time that is. At the time? What? Then I heard another bang. <laughs> so you heard two gunshots total. Yep. That's what Lotta said in her testimony yesterday. But then the boat comes back to shore and a man walks by my window. By your window? 
Yeah, by my window, right outside the window of my little shack. And could you see the man's face? Well, the fog was pretty darn thick, but he was right there in front of me. I saw him. That is a rather important detail added to your testimony. Oh my god. Wake up! <laughs> I have a bad feeling about this. Me? Me? Yeah, me too, Phoenix. Me too. That man was the defendant. He was saying, I can't believe he's... I can't believe he's dead. I can't believe he's dead? Uh, are you sure? Oh my god, stop falling asleep. Uh-oh. Dad! <laughs> okay, we're playing this. We're going back to being Keith. I see. Understood. Dead certain, Keith. He said, I can't believe he's dead while he was walking by, too. Witness, are you sure that the person you saw was Miles Edgeworth? It was him, that Edgeworth boy. Oh! Oh my god, he's fucking dead. Oh. You killed him! Von Karma, your glare. Actually, Von Karma, your face killed him, let's be honest. This sounds like decisive evidence indeed. I see no room for doubt. Von Karma. He lured me into cross-examining so he could set me up for a fall. <laughs> Nick! I don't like the way things are going on here! Everyone in the courtroom's glaring at us! I better quick, or this trial's gonna be over. Uh da 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 da, -da. raise an objection. objection. Your Honor, we proved in yesterday's trial that it could have not been Miles Edgeworth who fired that gun. Mr. Wright, are you referring to the fingerprints from Edgeworth's right hand found on the gun and the photograph showing a man firing with his left hand? Exactly. Oh, God. Don't you waggle your finger at me. That is easily explainable. He could have wiped his fingerprints after he fired. You're ignoring the truth of the matter. Then why is his fingerprint still on the gun? That makes no sense! Oh my god, I want to wrangle his neck. Everything in this witness's testimony is true. The judge is lost in thought. What should I do? Uh... uh oh god, what do we do? Um, we gotta raise some sort of objection. Your Honor. This witness claims that Edgeworth said, I cannot believe he's dead. But his word is all we have. You're telling a lie. Mr. Wright, in a court of law, the evidence tells all. Apparently, you have yet to realize that even this is a basic fact. If you say this testimony a lie, then show us proof. Okay, I raise you better. Why the fuck would Edgeworth say that? I can't believe he's dead. If you shot someone, if you shot someone, and then say that, like, what are you on? Actually, no, witness can easily be misled with information given to them. I'm writing this in class. Ooh! Doing crime scene investigations? That's so fucking fun. I love that. Holy shit. Nick, do we have evidence? It's no good. There's nothing I can do. Uh, are you sure? To be honest, I don't know what to do anymore. Oh no, Phoenix, don't throw in the fucking towel. Please. Can you hear me, sis? Please. I need your help. Nick needs you. <laughs> oh my god, it's fucking Von Karma. Get your smug ass grin away from my face. Mm, sorry, I was taking a sip. 
That's your sign to hydrate people. Three minutes was perhaps too high of an expectation. However, 15 minutes in isn't bad. This must be a new record. Enough. The witness may leave the stand. Can he leave anywhere? Back the hell up and let us think properly. Yeah. This courtroom, this court sees no reason to further prolong the trial. Are we just going to pronounce him guilty? Nor is there any need for more time to decide the case against the defendant. I died, I died, uh... I don't know. I feel like there's something we're missing. There is one bullet that was found. He was shot once, but there were... Okay, this is what's confusing me. Okay. So there are... Oh, I don't know. All right, whatever. The case is extremely clear. I see no room for misinterpretation of the facts. What? No. Hmm. This court finds the defendant, Miles Edgeworth. Oh no. The accused will surrender to the court immediately. He's guilty! No! What the fuck? There were two shots heard, one found. But there was a third shot someone was talking about. To be held at pending trial at the High Court within a month from today's date. That is all. The court is adjourned. Oh no. W who was that just now? Me! Huh? What? Larry? <laughs> Larry? The fuck are you doing here? Hi, Larry. What are you doing here? Do we want to start over now? No, apparently not. W what are you doing here? Listen, you gotta listen to me! Larry, what did you do? I... I was... I was there, in the park, the night of the murder. What? What do you mean you were there? Oh my god. I... I wasn't sure about it until just yesterday. But today, remember it. Remember what? The gunshot! I heard it too! You heard- I'm going to shake you, Larry. Uh, order! What is the meaning of this? Oh my god, Larry! The verdict has been decided. I call it for adjournment. One moment, Mr. Von Kong. So you say you heard a gunshot? Yeah, I did! A gunshot! That night! Man, you are sweating bullets! Are you good, bitch? I was sitting here in the audience listening to the testimony, and then I realized something he said different from what I remember. What he said was different from what I remember. Anyhow, I can just sit here and let you call Edgy a murderer. Don't call him Edgy. It, it's just not right! I'll testify! Let me testify! Let me testify! <laughs> Oh my god. Order, order. Well, this is the first time something like this has happened like in my courtroom. I thought you were gonna say you're gonna shoot Larry. <laughs> we're gonna shoot Larry. Judge, you have already given your decision. The trial is over. Nick, this is it. Larry's given us one final chance at this. She's right. If only it wasn't Larry. <laughs> can make things even worse. 
Miss Erdorf's just declared guilty, Nick. It doesn't get any worse. You're right. Okay. Your Honor, if there is another witness, it is our duty to hear him speak. Right here, right now. A waste of time. The verdict cannot be overturned. Judge? Allow me to speak my opinion. In all court proceedings, it is our duty to prevent inaccurate verdicts. In order to make sure there are no mistakes have been made, every witness should be heard. W what is this? I withdraw my previous verdict of guilty. <laughs> Mr. Von Kamp, I order you to call this new witness to testify. Now. What? The court will adjourn for a five minute recess. After that, we will hear this new witness. Larry! Love that guy. Even if he is a total buffoon. He is the new loser boy! <gasps> He's a loser man, let's be honest. <laughs> He, he has more like, he doesn't have the same charm as Junpei. December 28th, 1028 AM. Oh no, December 27th, my bad. My bad. Uh, defendant lobby number two. Phew. That was too close. Sorry to keep you on the edge. Sorry to keep you on the edge of your seat like that, Edgeworth. Ugh. <sighs> I've seen worse. Yeah, right, Edgeworth. You're sweating bullets. I just wonder what Larry plans to say in there. Yeah, me too, bitch. Larry was at the lake that night? Yeah. He said he went looking for the steel samurai balloon that flew into the lake. Oh! That's where this comes back in. That was... That was the same night? Really? Okay, work. Oh, right. And he found the balloon in the air tank that night? Yeah. Hey, Edgeworth. Uh, huh? Did you say something, right? Yeah, a lot of things. You seem out of it. What's wrong? He's thinking gay thoughts about you, Phoenix. Let him vibe. It's, it's nothing. He is thinking gay thoughts about you. I fucking called it. Um, Mr. Edgeworth, there's been something I've been meaning to ask you. What's that? Why are your fingerprints on the murder weapon? That's a great question. Thank you so much, Maya. <laughs> Why are your fingerprints on the murder weapon? Oh. You claim to have not shot him, but... When he fell into the lake, I went into a daze. I couldn't understand what was happening. I couldn't think straight. Then I saw the pistol lying on the floor of the boat in front of me. I picked it up without thinking. So, was he already dead when you found him? What? I didn't have a reason, really. I see. Right. Yeah? This might be our chance our chance to run off to Paris together. I don't know, what? Von Kama has only had run perfect trials. Perfect trials? Perfectly prepared witnesses, perfectly completed evidence. That is the secret to his success. I was gonna say, are you with the Phoenix? <laughs> this is the first time he's ever had to deal with something unexpected. He has had to let someone he hasn't even talked to testify before the court. And that someone is Larry. What are you getting at? It's likely his testimony will be full of holes, right? That's right, Nick. No ten-minute trial this time. We'll milk this, we'll milk this one for all it's worth. Oh yeah, we're going to be here for fucking ages. Hey, it was 15 minutes. 15. Everything's on Larry now. Oh boy. The key to fucking Edgeworth's freedom lands in Larry's laps. Joy. 
December 27th, 10.35 a.m., District Court number three. <laughs> There's Larry. Court is now back in session. Witness, please testify to the court about everything you saw on the night of December 24th. Right, leave it to me. Please, Larry, don't mess this one up. I hate to admit it, but you're our last chance. Oh, Von Karma looks fucking pissed. Von Karma didn't even have time to prep his witness. Just hope Edgeworth is right about this thing and being our big break. I hope so too. The night of the murder. Hello, Larry, my friend. I don't know. Uh, that night, I was out on the boat in the lake. I was looking for something and I uh, found it. So I quietly slipped the boat back into the rental dorm, uh, into the rental shop dock. Just then, just as I was thinking about going home, I heard this bang. I looked out over the lake, but I didn't see a boat. So after I heard that, a single gunshot, I went home. You heard one gunshot? What? Okay, okay. We've had someone say they've heard three gunshots. We've heard that there have been two gunshots. We found one bullet. And now Larry says there's only one. Okay, what's the truth, Beverly? Like, what? Oh my god. That was an unusually vague testimony, even for this court. In a case, Mr. Wright, you may begin your cross examination. Yes, Your Honor. What's wrong, Nick? It's Larry. I have no idea what he's going to say if I press him. I'm a little scared. Hmm. Well, we've come this far. There's no way going. There's no way to go but forward, Nick. Oh boy. Larry! Larry! That night I was on the boat. Um, I don't want to present, but I do want to check information. What do we have? Attorney's badge. We have uh, that. Richard, two gunshots just after midnight. Okay. That night, I was on the boat in the lake. Uh, I guess let's just press everything. Hold it! Something wrong, Mr. Wright? There are so many things wrong, I don't even know where to begin. <laughs> Except in for a fucking circle. Ah. Um, well, okay. First of all, what time was it? Oh, it was after 11, when I went out in the boat. Uh, by that time, everyone had gone home for the night. So I just waited until the coast was clear, so to speak. I love the little frowny face he has. It's very cute. Mm. And why are you out on the boat in such a late hour? I was looking for something, and I found it. Well, we know what he found. Looking for something? Uh, yeah. Mr. Butts, what was it you were looking for? What the witness is searching for is irrelevant. Most likely he was hunting for this Gordy. That's surprisingly close to the truth, in a sense. This is all irrelevant. Let's get it over with. So quietly, uh, da 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 da, so quickly, da, 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 okay. Around what time was that? Uh, well, let's see. I figured it was out searching for about an hour, so I guess it was around midnight, yeah. You're not sure? Hey, don't give me that face! I'm not some sort of human sundial, okay? People use watches these days, Larry. <laughs> just then, as I was just thinking about going home, I heard this bang. Where did the sound come from? Uh, yeah, well, I wasn't too sure about that. I looked around, you know. Did you look at the lake? Yeah, I looked. Uh, I looked out on the lake, but I didn't see a boat. Wasn't there a boat? Wasn't there a boat on the lake? No boat? No bitches? What? Order, order. Well, Mr. Butts? Whoa, whoa. Everybody just calm down, okay? I mean, it was really foggy that night. I'm not sure whether there was a boat out there or not. 
Oh, okay, no problem. That's just the most important part of this case. <sighs> so after I heard that single gunshot, I went home. Single gunshot? Mary, Beverly, Barbara, what? Okay, let's let's get to the bite. Uh, let's get to the fucking bottom of this. Wait a second, Larry. What? You only heard one bang? You're sure? Uh, that's what I said. But Miss Lotta Hart testified yesterday that she heard two bangs. I love Lotta. Love her so much. And the old man just now said the same thing. Where's the second ba bang bang, bitch? Like what? They both heard, birth heard? Oh my God. They both heard two gunshots that night. Huh? Were you even listening? Were you paying attention to what they all said? Th Yo, Nick, please. Mm. Huh? You know, something's been bothering me. I'm a witness, see? I'm like a customer here. What? You're the customer? Bitch, what? Customer of what? <laughs> so you gotta treat me like nice and stuff, okay? Larry, where's the second gunshot? Why did you hear one? What were you listening to? Uh, okay. Mr. Butts? What? Uh, you only heard one gunshot. Are you sure? I love that little face. It's so cute. Um, well, to tell you the truth, I'm not sure. Huh? Not sure. How can you not be sure? Yeah, well... I, uh, might have missed the other gunshot. I was, uh, listening to something else. Something else? My radio, dude! With my headphones! What?! How do you miss a gunshot with your headphones? Order, order, and stop that booing! Boo, you suck! <laughs> Me over in the corner just booing him. Boo! M Mr. Butts! You were listening to the radio with your headphones. Yeah, so what? Is that a crime? Is that a crime? Yeah, and you're going to jail, bitch. I listen to my radio. Everyone listens to the radio. What's the big deal? You heard a gunshot, and you didn't think to stop listening to the radio. I'm going to strangle you, Larry. Mm. Mr. Von Karma, your opinion? Waste of time. Well... Hey. <laughs> hey, what? Hey, what? I do not accept this witness, nor his shorty testimony. Oh my god, shut up, Von Karma! Hmm. Well, Mr. Wright, should he continue the testimony? Um, yeah. Your Honor, please, please allow the witness to continue his testimony. Bah! Nothing is more pitiful than a lawyer who doesn't know when he's lost. Very well, Mr. Butts, please give your testimony and be sure to include details with your radio. Right! Leave it to me! I wouldn't if there was any other way out of this, believe me. Shut the hell up. We don't care about your opinion, man. Yeah, shut up, Von Karma. What Larry heard. It's lonely being alone on Christmas Eve. That's what I was listening to. That's why I was listening to an all across show on the radio, see? I was listening to it real booming loud like. I'm sure I heard that gunshot. I remember exactly what the DJ was saying when I heard it too. Really? Um... Yeah, what's the big problem? Can a man listen to his radio in peace? Uh, isn't this a free country? Apparently not. I truly believe Larry has no idea what the problem is here. Judge. 
you believe a word this witness says? What he heard was probably nothing more than a drumbeat from the radio. True enough, it is difficult to believe this testimony. Objection! Oh god. Wait, your honor. The witness said he remembered exactly what the DJ said when he heard the gunshot. Excuse me? DJ? Oh my god. We don't have time to explain this to you, old man. <laughs> An announcer, the guy who says things on the radio. Anyway, what this means is that when he heard the sound, no music was playing. The DJ only talks in between songs, so he could have heard the gunshot from the lake. I'd like to cross-examine the witness, Your Honor. Very well, Mr. Wright. I can't believe I'm continuing the charade. <laughs> even, even, even Phoenix has lost hope. Oh, God. What Larry heard. It was lonely being alone on Christmas Eve. So you turn on the radio. Turn it on the radio. Right. I just want to hear someone's voice, you know? You don't know what's like it's out there alone on Christmas Eve. Alone! I shouldn't have said anything. Oh, this is going to be... Oh my god. Uh, that's what I was gonna uh, And all of requests show the radio seat. Do you by any chance remember the name of the program you were listening to? This has nothing to do with the case, Your Honor. Objection sustained. The witness was listening to the radio. That's all we need to know. Tell us, Mr. Butts, how loud was your radio set that night? He's judging him. I was listening to a real booming loud like. Real booming loud? Yeah, you know. And you had headphones on? Yep. I wouldn't think you could hear anything going outside of it at all. But I'm sure I heard that gunshot. Can you prove that? No, no, of course you can't. No. Nah, I can't prove it. No. But I remember that moment real clear. I mean, while I was talking about it, it came back real clear to me, you know? I remember exactly what the DJ was saying when I heard it too. What was he saying? What did he, uh, what did she say? Mr. Wright, please cease these pointless questions. What possible good could knowing what a D radio DJ say do to us? Indeed, Mr. Von Kama has a point. Although the question only if you have some reason uh, that we should care for. I think we should care for it. You never know what we can get out of this. We should care, Your Honor. Of course we should. Why? Uh... Well, how do you know if we don't ask? Hmm? Fine. Very well. Mr. Butts, please testify to the court. What was the radio announcement saying when you heard the gunshot? That's when it said, hey, it's almost Christmas. I heard the gunshot. It's almost Christmas? It's almost Christmas. Just after midnight. Wait a minute. Was there a second shot? Was there like shootings before midnight? Larry, are you absolutely sure what you're saying is correct? Huh? What's with the face? You look scary, dude. Hey, if you're trying to scare me, you better know I don't scare that easy. Is something the matter, Mr. Wright? Your Honor, did you hear what the witness just said? The DJ said, hey, it's almost Christmas when he heard the gunshot. Indeed. And? Almost Christmas means it wasn't Christmas. Do you realize what this means? When he heard the gunshot, it was still Christmas Eve. That would seem to be the case, yes. The contradicts the two testimonies we've heard so far, Your Honor. Uh, both Miss Hart and the old man said it was after midnight when they heard the shots. In other words, when they heard the gunshots, it was already Christmas. This is a clear contradiction, Your Honor. It is a flimsy contradiction. Okay. I don't know what we're trying to prove here, though. Oh, 
what does this mean? The two prior witnesses heard gunshots after midnight. However, the witness says he saw a gunshot before midnight. Judge, the answer is simple. The court witness is a plainly mistaken. Just look at him. Suspicious. What? Mm hmm. Well, Mr. Wright, what do you think about Mr. Butts' claim that he heard the gunshot before mid- I want to believe Larry. I think we should trust Larry. Despite everything else about him. Larry's not mistaken, Your Honor. You heard that gunshot before midnight. Intriguing. I'm assuming you have evidence for this wild claim. Show me evidence there was a gunshot before midnight. Okay, um... Uh... Oh! Ha! Oh my god! Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god! Look at this photograph! Oh my god, that's what the photo was for! <gasps> oh! This was taken by a witness yesterday, Ms. Lotta Hart, with her automatic camera. The timestamp on the photo reads December 24th, 11.50pm. Oh? Hmm. But there's nothing on the link in this picture. Your Honor, the real issue here is not why nothing is shown on this photograph. It's why this photograph exists at all. What do you mean? Your Honor, this photograph was taken by an automatic camera. That camera was set to go off in response to loud noises. Ah! Correct. There was a loud noise on the lake at 11.50 p.m. That is why this photograph was taken. Okay. In other words... When Larry heard the gunshots, it was most definitely still Christmas Eve. Indeed, it would seem that it is the case. Then, where does that leave us? Ms. Hart testified that she heard the gunshots after midnight. Are you claiming she was mistaken? Not at all, you're- Wait a minute. That ex- Hold on. I could- There's something in here. <gasps> Fired three times. Fired three. I knew I wasn't mistaken about that. So that explains why it was fired three times. It was once shot and then two shots after one shot before midnight and then two shots after midnight. This is the fact that the camera was also triggered at 15 minutes after midnight. Your Honor, that night there were two sets of gunshots with a 25 minute pause between them. Oh, shit. Why would this be? Uh, one moment, I'll be right back. Sorry about that. Oh my god, this music is fucking amazing. Objection! Don't be fooled, judge! That camera was set to respond to loud noises. Yes. Do, do, do. There was no proof that the loud noise at 1150 was a gunshot. Why, the witness could have sneezed, tr tr triggering the camera. Hey, my noise was clear that night, man. Clear! Hmm? Well, Mr. Wright, there's no turning back now. Can you prove that the loud noise was 1150 p.m. was indeed a gunshot? Please show the court the evidence if you have any... <gasps> We're gonna present the gun. This is my evidence. The murder weapon? Something about this pistol was bothering me, Your Honor. Both the witnesses who testified yesterday heard two gunshots. However, the murder weapon was fired three times. When, then, was the last shot fired? Only now have we realized the truth. That third shot that Larry heard... The third shot was the shot Larry heard just before midnight. Order! Order! Hmm. That would make sense of the evidence we've seen so far. However, this leaves me wondering exactly what did happen that night on the lake. Exactly. If this is true, there were two sets of gunshots separated by 25 minutes. 
One at 11.50, another at 15 minutes after midnight. Why, I ask you, why? Oh, I better think of something quick. Hmm. Wait a second. Gunshots separated by 25 minutes? Ah! Oh, what's wrong, Nick? I think he's figured something out. And I think I have a decent idea, too. I have it! I have it! Huh? Remember the case with the Steel Samurai? Uh, yeah, of course I remember. The murder in this case is the same idea as the murder in that case. Moving the body. He died somewhere else and then they moved the body. That's what Phoenix is getting at. Oh, okay! What do you mean? Maya! Y yeah? If we don't figure this out now, we'll never overturn Edward's guilty verdict. I've got a hunch, and I'm gonna run with it. Oh, right. I mean, is this safe? It's totally safe. Safe? We've already gotten a guilty verdict. We have nothing to lose. Oh, God. Phoenix is going manic. <laughs> Party popper. Definitely. Uh, see, she has no faith in you. You just watch and let me know if I see anything that sounds fishy, okay? Right, Nick. Your Honor. Yes, Mr. Wright? The testimony just now had just cleared up in the entire case. Impressive. What do you mean, Mr. Wright? <laughs> So you finally realize the truth. There can be no other murderer here than Miles Edgeworth himself. Oh, shut up, Von Karma. Wrong, Von Karma. A man was shot that night, but it wasn't Edgeworth who did the shooting. Listen, rookie. Take a deep breath and consider the facts. At the time of the murder, one boat was on that lake. This was shown by the witness's photograph. The defendant, Edgeworth, and the victim, Robert Hammond, were on the boat. Such a crisp ham. So crispy, so delicious. There was a gunshot fired on the boat and Robert Hammond fell into the lake. The distance of the shooting was one meter. Couldn't have been suicide. Well, the guilty party has to be the other man on the boat. I mean, it is hard to imagine any other possibility. Yes, but let's assume, but this assumes that the victim was shot at 15 minutes after midnight. What do you mean by that, Mr. Wright? We have photographic evidence of the time before of the shooter. The timestamp on the photo says 0015. But Larry heard a gunshot 25 minutes before that. Robert Hammond was killed then, 25 minutes before the shot on the lake. It's the only way Edgeworth could be innocent. Mr. Wright, are you quite mad? Explain who the two men on the boat are. It's not Edgeworth and Hammond, because that would mean that we're proving them right. The murderer and Hammond? But people were- but it wouldn't explain why Edgeworth was there. Was Edgeworth on the boat with the murderer? Of course, it was Edgeworth and the murderer. After the murderer killed Robert Hammond at 11.50, he assumed the guise of Mr. Hammond and met Edgeworth. What? Are you serious? Yes. Edgeworth won't tell us why he went to the lake that night. However, I have a hunch. That night, Robert Hammond called Edgeworth to the lake. 
Now, what did you know Robert Hanlon has faced that well? That's why he didn't suspect anything when the murderer took Robin Hammond's place. I'm not sure what to make of all of this. Lucritius! Uh, Lucritus. Lucritus? Mr. Wright. Tell us the name of the murderer, then. The murderer's name? Right. It's... Miles Lotta Hart. I don't know. I don't know. God. <laughs> I don't know. Actually, I don't know the murderer's name. You you don't know. Bah! Again, you waste my time. What if it was the caretaker? What if it is the fucking caretaker? I don't know because he never told us. <clears throat> the murderer in the care is the caretaker of the boat shop, the old man. At 11.50, he was the one who killed Robert Hammond. The, the caretaker of the boat shop? What did, where did he do this? There weren't any boats in the lake then. Why would he have to go all the way out into the lake just to shoot someone? I suggest that the real side of the crime was not on a boat. What? But well then, where did the murder take place? You know what? I bet it was in his fucking shop. Of course! The boat shop, where he lives. That way he can meet with the victim without seeing anyone. Objection. Do you have proof that the boat shop was the scene of the crime? Recall Larry's testimony, if you will. That night, he was on the lake in a boat, searching for something. He finds it and returns to the boat. Just as he's starting to head for home, he hears a gunshot. He heard a gunshot, Your Honor, even though he was wearing headphones at the time. In other words, the gunshot was very, very close by. And where would it be if he had just returned a boat? The boat shop. Mr. Wright. What happened that night on Gord Lake? Please tell the court from the beginning. Oh boy. Yes, your honor. Nick, are you sure about this? Um, not really. Great. Great, he has so much confidence, you guys. Oh, oh my God. But I think if I start at the very beginning, I take it slow, I might be able to figure this out. That night. The caretaker of the boat shop called Robert Hammond to a shop. Oh, <laughs> Hammond looks so shocked. This was around 11.50. That was when the gunshot that Larry heard was fired. After that, the caretaker put on Robin Hammond's coat. Became Robert Hammond. He got in the boat with Edgeworth and went out into the middle of the lake. Then... Who fired the pistol in the boat with Mr. Wright? Um, we know it's not Edgeworth. It was the caretaker. Of course, it was the murderer who shot the pistol. He shot twice, both Miss Edgeworth on purpose. W wait a minute. Yes. Why would he shoot twice if he didn't mean to hit anyone? Ah, uh, details, details. Know this, Mr. Wright. The moment you run out of explanations is the moment you lose. Tell us why the murderer had to fire twice. Uh, for shot me to create a witness. Ooh. I believe you shot twice to create a witness, Your Honor. Create a witness. The murderer lifts his pistol and fires one shot. That ensures anyone who has heard the shot would look at the lake. Indeed, Miss Hart did exactly that after hearing the first gunshot. Next, the murderer waits a bit and he fires again. Then... The murderer jumps from the boat himself, leaving the pistol in the boat behind him.
I see. To look for some to someone looking from the edge of the lake. It would appear that one of the men on the boat has shot the other. The murderer didn't know about the automatic camera, of course. That's why he shot twice to draw attention to the boat. Hmm. Once you realize that, everything else falls into place. The boat shop caretaker swam back to his shop, and then he put on Mr. Hammond's wet coat back onto the body, and threw the body into the lake. That is what happened, Your Honor. These are the events that transpired that night on the Gord Lake. I mean, it's a little hard to believe, but let's be fair, it is very interesting to think about. Bailiff! Bring out the witness from before. The boat shop kids are go quickly. Oh god, we're gonna bring him back out again. I gotta bring that voice out. Fuck. Very well. While we are waiting for the caretaker, I would like to ask the defendant, Miles Edgeworth, a few questions. Mr. Edgeworth, please take to the stand. Edgeworth! Hi, buddy! Mr. Edgeworth? You heard what the defense has said? Yes. Well? Why did you go to the lake that night? What Wright has said was mostly correct. Astonishingly so, actually. Yes. Several days ago, I received a letter. A letter was signed Robert Hammond. He asked me to come to the boat shop by the lake at midnight on Christmas Eve. He said I had something very important to discuss with me. Something important. I'm sorry, I can't say what it was. <clears throat> Your Honor, sir! Bailiff, we're conducting trial here. I ask that you remain quiet. The witness has disappeared. He isn't at the boat shop either. Motherfucker! Motherfucker! Where did he go? Where did he go? Oh my god, he vanished! What? What should I do? Find him, quickly! We cannot allow him to get away! <laughs> Mr. Von Karma, your witness has disappeared. A search warrant has already been issued. Hmm. It goes without saying that I cannot declare a verdict under these circumstances. I will extend the trial until tomorrow, the final day allowed. I request that the police department utilize its forces to find the witness. Am I understood? One more thing. So who is that boat shop caretaker? I think his identity has become very important to this trial. I want him, and I want to know who he is. Very well. Court is adjourned. Womp well, shit. December 28th. Nope. December 27th, 1.22 p.m. District Court Defendant Lobby number two. Hey, Nick, you did it! Yeah. Well, at least we got it out from under the guilty verdict. What about Larry? That was something else! Even Car Von Karma didn't know what to do with his testimony. Larry really helped us out. Sure. Once I, sifed, once I sifted through his unique testimony. Still... He did save us. I just wish our cases weren't so down in the wire all the time. I know what you mean. I feel like it's us on trial instead of our clients. Hey, Edgeworth. Hi, Edgeworth. How you doing? Um, Mr. Edgeworth? D uh, did, did you say something? Don't look so pained. Yeah, you look like you're about to drop any second, let's be honest. I mean, it looks like you're probably gonna get off the hook. You could try to smile just a little. Relax. Yeah, she has a point. You know, it's coming up Edgeworth these days. <sighs> I'm 
Sorry. But I fear it's not over for me yet. It's funny how much we hate Hedward the most before but not as much more. He's just a funky little guy who has many gay feelings for uh, Phoenix, so we can't get too mad at him. So. <laughs> what do you mean? Right. There's something that's been troubling me for a long time now. I don't know whether or not to tell you. Edgeworth? No, there's so little time left. I want to tell you to get it off my chest, but... He's going to confess to you. Come on! Come on! Just confess! I can't make up my mind. What is this about, Edgeworth? Do you see, like, they're so gay for each other. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's a nightmare I've had. A memory of a crime that I committed. Being gay? What? <laughs> a crime you committed? A memory of a murder. What? Oh my god, who did you think you murdered? Let's go! Alright. I guess we'll go into investigations day three. December 27th to 11 p.m. Wright and Co. Law Offices. What was Mr. Edgeworth talking about? Oh, buddy. A memory of a crime that I committed. A memory of murder. I'm not ending it here. Do you really think Mr. Edgeworth killed? I don't believe it. Not Edgeworth. Some painful memory has been troubling him recently. But he'd never take someone's life. Never. Nick. Yo, how's everyone doing? Larry, the fuck are you doing in my office? Get the fuck out! Uh. What do you think of my performance today? I'm... I'm gonna fucking kill you, Larry. <laughs> I had him swooning in the aisles, huh, Mile? Swooning? Me? Oh. Oh, yes! I do remember feeling faint. <laughs> right on. But tell me the truth. He was like love at first sight, right? Right, Nick? Uh-huh. Me? I, uh, well, maybe my heart skipped a beat or two. <laughs> Let them be gay. I think you'd do better than that. Come on, I saved Edgeworth in there, dude. Edgy. You should be bowing before me. Yeah, bow before your hero. Oh, Jesus Christ. Okay, hi, buddy. How are you doing? Today's trial. Larry, you really helped in the trial today. Your mother would be proud. <laughs> you did? If you were in there, Larry, I'm sure Edgeworth would have been found guilty. <laughs> uh, no, but seriously, Nick. That boat shop caretaker guy is pretty suspicious. But Edgy ain't off the hook yet. Might have spoiled the mood, Larry. Hey, I'm just a guy sitting in the audience, you know? But from where I was sitting, Edgy seemed pretty d edgy. I mean, can you really know he's telling the truth about that night? Nick? I don't know. But what I do know is I'm going to believe you two until the end. Sorry. Us two? And you're within two else. You mean me, right? Nah, he means me. Right, Nick? Yeah, you, Larry. Not me? But why you, Larry? Huh? Um, actually, yeah. Why me, Nick? <laughs> oh, nuns with the silent treatment! Edgeworth, Edgy, Edgy, Edgeworth. Nick, why do you trust Mr. Edgeworth so much? Because he, he's gay for him, Maya. Get with the program. Get with the program. I mean, 
claiming he's changed recently, true. When we first met him, he was kind of a jerk, don't you think? You didn't know him back then. Back when he wanted to become a defense attorney. Wait. Was that when then was that when you two were classmates? Yes, in a grade school. Oh, the song. They saved me. Miles. And Larry. They saved me and I'll never forget it. That's why I became a defense attorney, you know? What? Hey, hey, Larry, what is he talking about? Huh? Oh, um... Uh, sorry, I kind of forgot. <laughs> Hi! Hello, Chief. Can I call you Chief? Hi, Chief. Thank you for the raid. Mwah. Hope you all enjoy your time here. We're just playing through some uh, Phoenix Raid Ace Attorney. It's growing great, as you can see. <clears throat> okay, Nick, out with it. I'm going to hear the story today, and that's final. Okay, okay. It's kind of a long story, so hang in there. Uh, ah! Hello, uh, Chief. Oh, my God. T Chief... Jenner? Chief Jenner? I have no idea. <laughs> We're gonna call you Chief. Hi. Thank you for uh thank you for dropping by with the raid and thank you for the follow. Mwah. <laughs> it was the very end of third grade. I was on trial. A class trial. A, a class trial? Alright, let's hear about this story. You remember Larry? Spring, end of third grade? A kid in our class got his lunch money stolen. Lunch money? Our school was really small. Every month, kids would bring an envelope with money for lunch for, um, for lunch from home. Huh, I see. Anyway, this kid's envelope disappeared, with $38 still inside. Bitch stole some money! The fuck? Oh, yeah, now that you mention it, I do remember that. I can see why you forget, though. You were out of school that day. Anyway envelope had been stolen during PE class. I was coming down with a cold, so I skipped PE that day. I was the only one not in class. I was the only one not in class. You just got done streaming this? Ah! Absolutely. Hell yeah. Let's fucking go. It's such a great game. I hope you're I hope you're enjoying it as much as I've been enjoying it. So, they thought you did it? Yeah. The kids in class said I should be put on trial. Trial? So the next day, we held a classroom trial with me as a defendant. I... I didn't do it! Guilty! He did it! Guilty! It was you! Thief! Give the money back! You're such a meanie! No one play with him! Just admit you did it! You can't hide from the truth! Tell us the truth! We're not gonna play with you anymore! Yeah, and you're in a barring race or you should've been around like really late. We're on the library committee! You might have been fit since I loaned you! You robbed that bank the other day! <laughs> That Phoenix, you know you shouldn't steal people's money. It's not right. In the end, even though the teacher thought I had done it. Even the teacher thought I had done it. Go over and apologize, Phoenix. I didn't know what was happening. I was so sad, I couldn't stop crying. Aw, midget Phoenix! Everyone was staring at me like I had done it. I tried to apologize. I went to where the boy whose money had been stolen was sitting. That's when it happened. You shouldn't have to apologize! The only thing that belongs in the trial is evidence! Anything else has no place! You should all be ashamed, amateurs! I got an point in like 20 minutes, got around good luck with the stream. Thank you so much, Chief! Thank you for dropping by and welcome to the family! Mwah. Miles? Midget Miles! It wasn't you who stole my money, was it? N no. Wait! It was Miles' money? Then you shouldn't apologize. Everyone's been shouting you did it, but no one has any proof. That's why, Your Honor, this boy is innocent. But, Miles, it was your money that was stolen. Yeah, yeah, he did it. He's the one. We don't need proof. Make him say he was sorry. Why don't you all just shut up? Uh, it's always how it is, everyone ganging up on picking on one person. 
Just think how he feels. He said he didn't do it, so he didn't do it. Jesus is doing this in third grade. Dang. Yeah, really. Very well. I'll replace the money myself. This class trial is over. Oh, That's how it happened. After us, after that, the three of us were best friends. Oh, that's so adorable. Wow, I had no idea. Yeah, I had no idea either. I mean, I forgot. <laughs> Thank you, Larry, for your insightful commentary. That's when I learned what it meant to be all alone. Totally alone without a friend in the world. You did a good thing, Larry. Um, yeah, well, I was just lucky that I took the day off from school. If been there, they would have thought I had done it. Though I took it kind of personally, you see? When something smells, it's usually the butts. After the trial. Anyway, Hedrith and I talked after that trial. That's when I heard his father was a defense attorney. I remember his eyes could shine when he talked about his father. I'm going to become a defense attorney, just like my father. A famous defense attorney. Aww. Then, a few months later, he suddenly transferred to another school. The DL6 incident. Right. I'm not sure, but the transfer probably had to do with his father's death. That's so sad. It was several years later when I heard Edgeworth's name again. There was an article about him in the newspaper. The headline was something like Dark Suspicions of a Demon Attorney. Whoa! I mean, I know lawyers are evil and all, but damn! Shit! Fabricating evidence, manipulating testimonies, covering up facts. The article said he'd do anything to get a guilty verdict. Anything. But why? What happened? I mean, it's not like the edgy I know I used- It's not like the edgy I used to know at all. That's what I thought, too. I tried to get in touch with him. I don't know how many times. He never replied. I guess he didn't want you to see his old friends. Just, I just couldn't drop it, though. I wanted to meet him to learn why he'd become who he'd become. That is, Phoenix, lovingly, respectfully. That is the gay shit I have heard all day. <laughs> That's when I decided. Wait. You don't mean. That's why? That's why he became a defense attorney. To me. This man. This man. Phoenix Wright. Became an edge. Became a defense attorney. Just to see. A guy. Y'all. That is the gayest shit ever. I will not be taking I'm not taking complaints. I'm not taking constructive criticism. I'm not taking any of it. I don't care. This is so gay. The fuck? <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. Kind of love it though. It's great. Oh my God. You did it just to me. Yeah. Very gay. If I was a defense attorney, I knew I'd have to meet him whether he wanted to or not. In court. That is so dramatically gay. Edgeworth believed in me and I believe in him. He's in pain and no one's on his side. I'm the only one who knows the real Edgeworth. I'm the only one who can help him. Oh, Nick. So... Is that why you helped me out for free? Uh, yes. <laughs> I helped you because I believed in you. Mm. Except I don't remember saying I'd do it for free. Mm. Aw, Nick! 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 We have to say to the worst if it's the last thing we do, okay? Right. It very well may be. First, that's the... Oh, sorry. First, there's that rental boat shop caretaker. We need to find out who or what he is. He's an alien. <gasps> you heard it here first. Um, I'd settle for who. I guess I can clean out some of his evidence I no longer need. 
Okay, let's go! Alright, well, it looks like we got rid of some evidence, but that's okay. Oh, we got done our talking. Let's go... Let's go Gord Lake. December 27th, Gord Lake Park entrance. <gasps> Gumshoe! Oh my god, buddy! How are you doing? doing buddy old pal old friend old mine we have him because you like him <laughs> yes <laughs> hey pal no long time long time no see oh detective gumshoe close one today eh i got so worked up i snapped my tie in half damn gina uh, leave the tie alone what does it do to what did it do to you jesus christ oh uh, sorry about that no problem pal thanks to you now i know who really did it you mean the boat shop caretaker? Look, I made you a promise. I'll have that scoundrel in my custody by trial time tomorrow. Come what may, it is my duty to you as a police officer. Now I'm off to catch the criminal. Bye, buddy. Detective Gumshire is active today. Oh, one other thing. Ah! No one can go into the woods today. The woods? Rolado is camping? Oh, what happened? The woods are off limits to camping, and apparently a, the park ranger found out. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. I think Lada's in trouble. Ooh. He got pretty mad. No one can go in for a while. I guess Lada's in a lot of trouble. Hey. <laughs> Anyway, I'll be seeing you tomorrow. Bye, Gumshoe. All right, let's go down to the public beach. Um, Gordy Lake Beachfront. Huh? The steel eyesore is missing. Eyesore! Looks like the hot dog stand is closed, too. I guess Larry's too busy worrying about Mr. Edgeworth to show up to work. Wow, he's so worried about him. Lovingly. Boat rental shop. December 27th, boat rental shop. That old caretaker got away. Yep. I never imagined he might be the real murderer. Ahem! Oh my god, why are you here? Oh my god! Why are you here, Grossberg? Uh, I know that cleric of the throat anywhere. Uh -huh, hello! What might you be doing here? A uh, for a walk, hmm? Ah, the days of my youth. Like the scent of fresh lemon, you see? Oh my god, what are you doing? Mr. Grossberg! This is not the title! This is not the time for idle reminiscing! Mr. Edgeworth's trial ends tomorrow. And it is true, yes. For what from I saw from today's trial, Edgeworth should be fine, right? Well, I'm not so sure about that. How? What do you mean by that? Well, I'm not sure. <clears throat> well, if you find anything out, come by my office at once. I might be able to offer some assistance. Well, uh, bye. Nice chatting with you. <laughs> Thanks. Bye. What do you think? The, what do you think Mr. Grossberg was doing here anyway? Yeah, why is he here? What? Who knows? Maybe he's just vibing. Can we go inside? <gasps> we can go inside. <sighs> Nobody's home. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Hey, it's Polly! I wonder where your owner's gone, Polly. Hello? Hello? Ah! I can't believe he'd run off and leave his poor parrot to fend for herself. Hello? Hello? Ah! Alright, let's examine. Bird. Maybe I should take care of Polly, Nick. You probably shouldn't just kidnap her. The police know about her anyway. I'm sure they'll do something. Oh, okay. Sorry, Polly. He says I can't take you. 
great. Now the bird's gonna hate me. See, this is what you get, Phoenix. Ah! What's wrong? Huh? Oh, never mind. What? Tell me. Just when I saw the TV, I remembered. They're showing a Pink Princess special this week. Oh my god, bitch, and I answer the damn bird. <laughs> oh. See, that's why I didn't want to tell you. <laughs> oh, Maya. Oh, I love you so much. See, Nick, don't people usually put pictures of fish on the wall because they do boast about them? Uh, yeah, I guess so. You mean pictures of fish they caught, right? Right, but don't all the fish here on the wall look really puny to you? Well, you know what they say. You should have seen the one that got away. I said the one that got away from us was the caretaker. And we did see him. Why do I feel like we're having two different conversations here? <laughs> mm, everything's cold. Looks like he didn't turn on this. He looks like he didn't turn the heater on. Because he hasn't been back here since the trial. Okay, let's do the fucking elephant in the room. Oh. That reminds me, Nick. <sighs> Polly here knows the number to the safe, right? Yeah, that's right. Polly, what's the number to the safe? One, two, two, eight. Ah! Let's open it, Nick. Come on. I'm sure there isn't any money in here. Aww. But hey, keeps it locked, right? There must be something of value in here. I'm not so sure. Okay, Nick, let's see what's in there. Yes, there might be a clue or two. The only thing in here is a letter. A letter? Aw, boring. Hmm, there's no name or signature on this thing. It's handwritten in very precise, clear letters. What's it say? Get your revenge on Miles Edgeworth. What? Excuse me? It Hello? Uh, what? Edgeworth? Someone set. Someone is. Someone's plotting. I smell a stunt. That's not good. That's not good at all. Nick! Why would Edgeworth's name be on here? How should I know? I'm gonna read the whole thing. Get your revenge on Miles Edgeworth. It also says, this is your last chance. It is now time to give revenge on the two men who ruined your life. Who is this guy? The rest of the letter goes to describe the murder plot in detail. Oh! Oh, this was, this was meditated. This is a meditated revenge story. Okay. How to kill Robert Hammond and how to frame Edgeworth. Pulling Edgeworth out to the lake, getting on the boat, firing twice. This is exactly what I figured out today in court. It's all here, in perfect detail. What do you think it means, Nick? I don't know, but it looks like these are instructions for the caretaker. He killed Robert Hammond and called out Edgeworth. He was following instructions, which means that there was someone else helping him. That's not good. That's really not good. That means that there is a mastermind behind all of this shit. But who could have written that letter? And what does it mean to get revenge on Miles Edgeworth? I don't know. Everybody hates that bitch, apparently. Look, I don't know, okay? But one thing's for certain. This letter is an amazing clue. Letter from the safe added to the courtroom records. Letter from the safe. Get your revenge on Miles Edgeworth. This note details the murder and setup. Anything else in here that we need to know about? There's nothing left in the safe. I wonder why the caretaker didn't leave the letter with didn't take the letter with him. He left in a hurry, right? I don't think he even came back here after the trial. Okay. God, where do we go now? Should we go tell I guess we let's 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 you know what? You know what? 
Miles is being held in the detention center, right? Let's go talk to him. He might have some insight on some shit. Speak of the devil. Except for Phoenix. Yeah! Phoenix doesn't hate him. Phoenix has really gay thoughts about him, let's be honest. Uh, December 27th, detention room, visitor's room. You look as grim as always. <sighs> um, Mr. Edgeworth, I heard the story about the class trial. Class trial? Uh, what do you mean? You don't remember. No, I don't. Your lunch money was stolen, wasn't it? They're in grade? Lunch money? Oh. Oh, that's, that's right. I, I seem to remember something like that. Nick, I think you're the only one who really remembers. Well, it probably only mattered to me anyway. Mr. Edgeworth, didn't you know? A trial was the reason me uh, Nick became a defense attorney. See, do you see this face right here? This is the face of a man who has many gay thoughts going through his mind. Like a fucking water wheel. This is the first time I'm hearing his first name. <laughs> Ridiculous. Ridiculous. Gee, thanks. That said, it does sound like the kind of thing you'd do. You haven't changed a bit, have you, right? So simple. To a fault, even. Well, maybe, yeah, but I think you changed too much, Edgeworth. Oh my god. Perhaps. Oh my god. I'm sorry, I'm really I'm having gay feelings about these two. It's great. Why prosecute? <clears throat> hey, Edgeworth, why did you become a prosecutor anyway? You should look up to your dad. He said he wanted to be a defense attorney, right? I couldn't let myself deny the reality like you. What do you mean? My father was taken from me and you wanted me to defend criminals? I I'm sorry, right? But I'm not that good of a person. One suspect was apprehended in your ma- one, uh, one suspect was apprehended in your father's murder, right? Yes, the man trapped in the elevator with my father. His name was Yanni Yogi. Now, I have a thought. We learned that Yanni Yogi's life was basically ruined after this. Is that who the caretaker is? Is the caretaker this Yanni Yogi guy? The, the bailiff? Was it the bailiff? I think it was a bailiff or something like that. He had to be the shooter, any way you look at it. Yet, he was found innocent. The defense attorney got him off the hook. That would be Robert Hammond. On that day, 15 years ago, the three of us were trapped in that elevator for five hours. When we were rescued, we suffered oxygen. We were all suffered oxygen deprivation. I had lost all memory of the murder. Lost your memory? For now, I can't recall what happened in that elevator. That was the crux of the Yoni attorney's argument in court. He claimed Yanni Yogi had not been sound of mind due to the oxygen, due to the oxygen deprivation. Yogi was released due to a lack of evidence. Innocent. the man behind planning maybe that i don't know either he is the caretaker or he was no i don't know i don't know he's tied into this shit somehow that's when i changed my mind i started to hate defense attorneys prosecutor von karma what's your deal with him What's your relationship with Von Karma? He's my teacher, and a man who deserves respect. I learned everything I know of courtroom techniques from him. So he's like my sister was to you, Nick. He was a perfectionist in all things. In court, in his, in his professional life. Oh, personal life. Whoops. He was obsessed with doing everything perfectly. Perfectly, huh? 
In all the cases he has taken on, none were left unsolved. And not one suspect was declared innocent. Ever. But... but that's... I know. It's possible some of the suspects were indeed innocent. However, it is possible for us to accurately determine that in every case. Although Kama does it his job is to find the suspect guilty perfectly. In any case, it is nigh well impossible to find a weakness in him. Should a weakness appear, he would do anything in his power to make it go away. Um, Edgeworth, if what you're saying is true, you're headed for a guilty sentence tomorrow. He's right! There's no time to praise the enemy, Mr. Edgeworth! It is a strange situation in which I find myself, I'll admit. No kidding! Okay. 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 What the fuck is up with this, Edgeworth? Edgeworth, see this letter? Hmm? This came out of the safe in the shack where the boat rental caretaker lives. I see. Revenge on me. Who is that old guy anyway? I... I don't know. Could he be an innocent defendant you got declared guilty or something? Nah, bitch. I'm telling you, this guy is Yanni Yogi. Or related to Yanni Yogi. I don't know. Something about that. It, that's the part that's kind of like... There is something there. I just know it. Nice, right? But I don't remember that old man. Not at all. So he was following this letter then. Which means that there's someone else behind it. Yeah, it's Yanni Yogi. I don't know. Now is, now is the time to get revenge on the two men who ruined your life. Two men. Meaning myself and Robert Hammond. It also says this is your last chance. No, I am. I don't know how, I don't know why, but I am like 95% sure that the old guy, the caretaker, is Yanni Yogi because of the like, this is your last chance, uh, wanting to get revenge on both Edgeworth and uh, Robert. Okay, but the bigger question is, who the fuck is send- who- who sent the letter then? Lost chance. Wait, maybe- maybe he's talking about the Statue of Limitations on the DL6 incident. Wait. Wait, that old man. What? What is it? Do you know who he is? Yogi. Could he be Yogi? Yogi? The suspect in the DL6 incident. The one who was found innocent. Fucking knew it. Even even Edgeworth is having the same thought of me. Fuck. You talking about this? Yanni Yogi. Yanni Yogi was a court bailiff at the time. We just happened to be in that elevator together 15 years ago. Oh god, the earthquake. quake was incredibly strong. Before I knew it, everything was dark. We were in there for so long, it felt like forever. The writing of the letter makes me think of the old man, yeah. Maybe. The air thinned, and the darkness closed in in that little box. We became unsettled. Help! I can't breathe! Quiet, I said quiet. You're, ma you're not making this easier. I want to get out! Help! Get us out! Don't shout. You'll just use up more oxygen. <gasps> oh, God. That's all I remember. When I came to, I was in the hospital bed, staring up at the ceiling.
court, Yanni Yogi's mental condition was called in question. They claimed the oxygen, the oxygen deprivation caused stre and stress had caused temporary insanity. In the end, the claim passed the court, and Yogi was found innocent. Huh. But isn't that strange? This letter tells him to get revenge on Edgeworth. Why would he want to take revenge on you? Edgeworth, you know something. Right. Yeah? There's something I've been troub that has been troubling me these last few days. I... I didn't know whether or not I should tell you. Are the gay feelings about to come back again? You mean the nightmare? Oh, yeah, that. Okay, never mind. It's a nightmare I've had. A memory of a crime that I committed. A crime you committed. A memory of a murder. I think... I think the time has come to tell all. The Nightmare. For the last 15 years, I've had the same dream almost every night. I wake up in a fearful sweat every time. But what kind of dream? A dream about my father's killing in the dark. I love how we instantly jump to being gay feelings. <laughs> Listen! Listen! When it comes to these two, you kind of have to say that. Help! I can't breathe! Quiet. I said quiet. You're not making this any easier. I want to get out! Help! Help us! Um, don't shout. You'll need to... You'll just use up more oxygen. I... I can't breathe. You're... You're using up my air! What? Stop breathing my air! I'll... I'll stop you! Ugh! What? What are you? Stop breathing my air! No! Father! He's a talking father! And I see the pistol lying up by my feet. I don't know whether it's from the evidence that day in the court or the bailiffs. The day as I pick up the pistol. Get away! Get away from my father! And with that scream, I wake. It's a bone chilling scream. A scream that has rung in my ears for the past 15 years. Oh my god. Bitch, you sleep like this? What? Oh my god, Edgeworth. But that's that's just a dream, right? Right? He doesn't know if it's just a dream or if it's a memory. But it's the only th that thought is the only thing that has kept me sane for the last fifteen years. But what if I'm wrong? What if it's real? They they say that sometimes people shut off memories in self defense. Maybe it was I who killed my father. If you think about it this way, this letter makes sense. Get your revenge on Miles Edgeworth. Think about it. Yogi was really innocent. That's why he wanted revenge against me. Wait, Edgeworth. You mean... It was me. I was the true criminal of the DL6 incident. I shot my father. This... This is bad. What are we gonna do, Nick? What can we do? I... I don't know. I don't think there's anything we can do, like it or not. If there's something else... If there's someone else who knows a lot about the DL6 incident, maybe... <gasps> there is, Nick! Oh, no. Please don't make me... Oh, my God. Please don't make me go to his office. Game, I don't want to go to his office. <laughs> There is someone else who really knows about DL6! 
Wouldn't your fingerprints be on the gun? That, that's my thought, yeah. Oh, God. I don't wanna. Oh, fuck. December 27th, the Grossberg Law Offices. Mr. Grossberg! Ah, hello there! What's wrong? You look troubled. No kidding! I can't believe you're not! My, my, my! Just calm down and I'll tell me what happened. It's Mr. Edgeworth! He. He. <laughs> oh gosh. I, I see. Motherfucker, we just did a whole thing the last two days on fingerprints in class and tracking our own. I bet it was, I bet there was something. Maybe they didn't check the gun? Question mark? Hmm. So Edgeworth dreamt about he shot his own father. Uh, it's only a dream, only a dream. Hmm, I wonder. What? Well, that's the case. Why do you two look so troubled, hmm? Well... Also, consider this. Yogi quite clear certainly holds a deep grudge against Miles Edgeworth. So deep he'd want to frame him for murder. This leads me to surmise... That Mr. Edgeworth's dream is not a dream. It was real. As you imagined... Miles Edgeworth threw the gun threw the pistol to save his father. The pistol fired, and the deed was done. Oh, God. No. I don't believe it. Why not? I don't know, because this is Ace Attorney. <laughs> Yogi was suspected of murder, and his career as a bailiff was irrecoverably wrecked. Thus, he sought revenge on Miles Edgeworth. This was his last chance, of course, with the Statue of Limitation so close. All right. All right, bozo. Let's talk. What do you know about Edward's father? Yeah, tell us about Grigory. It was a fancy journey without peer. It sounded trite, but it's true. Well, he may have had one peer now that I think about it. Your mentor, Misty Faye. Your mentor, Maya Faye. My sister? Gregory Edgeworth was a very disapproving, was very disapproving on Mr. Von Karma's techniques. That's no surprise. Von Karma is an extreme man. Forged testimonies and evidence are nothing to him. The result, he has a perfect win record in court. Beat him, Gregory Edgeworth tried to call attentions to his methods. And? He lost. He died in despair, as it were. I see. The spirit medium. Yeah, let's talk about Misty. When Gregory Edgeworth was killed, the police called the spirit medium. That was your mother, Misty Fay. I am Gregory Edgeworth. I have been killed. The one who shot me was the bailiff, Yanni Yogi. Yet Yogi was found innocent. That was when my mother left us. Everyone called her a fraud. That's right. Everyone thought she was, you see. Yet now that I think about it, it seems the one who lied was Gregory Edgeworth's ghost. He was protecting his kid. Gregory Edgeworth must have known who shot him. I don't believe it. So you're saying he falsified his testimony? That Edgeworth's dad lied to protect his son? It's only a possibility, mind you. But a possibility, nonetheless. Okay. Uh, is there anything we can present to you? You know what? Let's present you the letter. Oh! So this is a letter? It does seem that Yogi was following this letter. When he killed Hammond. But why killed Robert Hammond? Hammond was a skilled defense attorney. 
but he's defended clients not for their sake, but for his own. Huh? His own sake? He never trusted his clients, that one. <laughs> Stupid letters. <laughs> How about contact the damn ghost right now and ask? You know what, Maya? Contact, contact that bitch right now. The one thing you trusted was his own ability. But he got his clients find innocent. So why should it matter? Actually, my dear, it's quite different. He won that innocent verdict for not one, for no one but himself. Yogi was a free man, but socially he was ruined. That's true. Huh? You'll understand soon enough. Wait. What is it? This letter. I've seen this handwriting somewhere before a long time ago. What handwriting is this? I have any ideas who wrote this? It couldn't have been Edgeworth, because why would he write a letter to himself? Uh, no, it couldn't be Edgeworth, because why would he write a letter to get revenge on himself? It couldn't be Yogi, because it's directed to him. Manfred! Hmm, could it be Manfred von Karma? Von Karma? Why would he have something to do with this? Um, well, I'm not sure. How the hell can you recognize handwriting? You can recognize handwriting. There, there's really recognizable handwritings that I've seen. I have a friend who looks like literally a murderer's handwriting. It's actually astonishing. But every time I look at their handwriting, I'm like, I know it's you, bitch. Only you could write like a murderer. <laughs> lovingly, lovingly, lovingly. Lovingly, I say that. Hmm. Hmm? Von Karma. Von Karma. Wait, you're right, my boy. Oh, no. This is Von Karma's handwriting. I'm sure of it. I used to see it all the time in court reports. What? But, but that means the one who told Mr. Yogi to kill was... Correct. Manfred Von Karma himself. Mine is Chicken Scratch. Let's fucking go. I love Chicken Scratch handwriting. I, but I, uh... I like to write, so I have, like, decent handwriting. Eligible handwriting, to say the least. It's not perfect, but it's eligible. What does this mean, then? Why would Von Karma want to frame Edgeworth? Period, I guess. Why? Prosecutor Von Karma. If it truly was Von Karma who wrote this letter, then he would know the truth. He would know that Miles Edgeworth had accidentally killed his own father. <laughs> He'll say as much tomorrow in court, I should think. He'll press the point until the court finds Miles Edgeworth cute. I like to write, I can't read it sometimes. Yeah, no, that's fair. Sometimes you look at writing and you're like, did I write that? Why? But I prefer to type my stories. Same, honestly. Because at least with typed stuff, you can kind of change the font to make it look fun, but... Oh no. But but how could Von Karma know about Mr. know about Mr. Edgeworth's past like that? Even Mr. Edgeworth thought it was a nightmare. Mm, that I do not know. And I do know that Von Karma is both persistent and a perfectionist. He may be seeking to satisfy a grudge against Gregory and Gregory Edgeworth by hurting his son. What do you mean? It's fifteen years ago. Von Karma met Gregory Edgeworth in court, and Von Karma did win, but he didn't make it through the trial and scarred. Oh? What happened in the trial between Edgeworth's dad and Von Karma? Von Karma got the guilty verdict he wanted. He won the trial. But Gregory Edgeworth accused Von Karma of faulty evidence. And though he lost the trial, Edgeworth's accusation stood. Faulty evidence? It was the only penalty Von Karma has ever received in his career as a prosecutor. Gregory Edgeworth dealt with a blow to his perfect trial record. Wow. 
That's impressive, actually. Might have been quite a shock for Von Karma. You took a vacation for several months after that, you see? Vacation? Just because you got a penalty? What a fucking drama queen. Oh my god. A vacation. Oh my god. I hate him more and more every moment. Yes, an unusual event for the man. That is the first and the last vacation he's taken in many years to prosecute him. Sorry about that. Really? He doesn't take vacations? Like, go to the sea or uh, go to the mountains? Don't tell me he's never been to Europe. You have strange ideas about vacations, Maya. In any case, that was the only time he took a vacation from work. I believe the penalty upset him quite a lot. Odd. I wanted to keep a perfect record so badly. Why would he take such a long vacation? That is strange. You are correct. What do we do, Nick? Varkama is going to bring up deal six. You, you can bet on it. What if Mr. Edgeworth pleads guilty to deal six? Oh, God. I really hope not. I won't let him. Um, yes, Mr. Edgeworth. Uh, Mr. Wright, I hate to say this, but even accidental murder is murder, you know? I know that. I... I just believe in Edgeworth's innocence. I can't believe he'd kill someone. But, but Nick! Mr. Edgeworth admits it himself! His father must have lied to protect him from the great... From beyond the grave. I don't care. I know he's not guilty. Mr. Wright. If you say so, I suppose I could go check again. The police files might hold something of interest. Police files? Mr. Grisberg, thank you. I can't promise anything. In fact, I think the chances of finding something are slim. I understand. Police materials. Hmm. Hmm. I guess let's head. You know what? Okay, no, they have a point. Let's go to. One day left, Nick. Yeah, I know. Well, no time to waste. Let's get going. All right. Criminal affairs. Huh. December 27th, the police department, criminal affairs. There's hardly anyone here. Everyone must be out looking for the old guy, Yogi. Ah, it's you. I don't think Gumshoe will be coming back today. He's staying out late looking for someone. Sounds like Detective Gumshoe is pounding the pavement for real. Um, we were wondering if we can check out the record room again. Well, now, I can't have just anyone wandering in in there. But I guess Mr. Von Karma's in there now, anyway. What? 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 What do you mean Von Karma's- What? No, 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 no. What do you mean Von Karma's in there? Excuse you? You can go in as long as he's there. Von Karma? Yeah, he just arrived, actually. Von Karma's in the record room. Nick, let's hurry! Oh, no. Are we gonna confront Von Karma in his stupid fucking face? Please don't make me confront Von Karma in his goddamn stupid face. December 27th... Police Department Record Room. Dusty as always. We we're the only ones here just yesterday. I'm sure they haven't had time to clean. What's wrong, Nick? N nothing. I was just noticing that he isn't here. Von Karma. Oh, okay, he's not here. What's this? Huh? One of the drawer. Uh, one of the drawers are um, here's is open. Someone must have been looking in it recently. The label says, unsolved cases evidence. Hmm. Unsolved cases. Nick! The file for DL6! It's completely empty! Ah! Oh, motherfucker! Motherfucker! Ah, oh, 
stupid whore. I know exactly who's behind this. What? What are you doing in here? Uh, ah! 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 Oh my god, you look like a zombie. Please step like 15 feet away. Don't come anywhere near me. Oh, crunchy. Oh my god, you are so crunchy. Oh my god. Sorry. Eek! Von Karma! You. Please don't look at me. Don't blink at me. Don't acknowledge my existence at all. How do you know my name? What? Uh, huh? Have we met? It, uh, it, uh, it, uh, it, uh, it, uh, excuse me? I think it's the old timers. I think it's kicking in. <laughs> I, I, I think he's forgotten about us. Oh my God. What are you saying? We see each other every day, don't we? We're Miles Edgeworth's defense team. Defense team? Um, <clears throat> I beg your pardon? I, you see, I rarely remember defense attorney. Uh, I hate his smile. Also, wow, great. Fuck my drag, I guess. They look like bumps to me. Needless things to be crushed. I can see how this guy was a. I can see how this guy was Edgeworth's mentor. He fucking hates us. <laughs> Hi. Hey. Uh, friend. What do you got there in your arms? <laughs> That looks like case files to me. Edgeworth. Um, uh, Mr. Edgeworth is your student, right? <laughs> A romanticist who can still, who still can't shed the veneer of amateurism. Just like his father, always second rate. Mr. Von Karma. You had an axe to grind with Mr. Ed with Gregory Edgeworth, didn't you? Give us those, please. Yes. Me? A grudge against a mere defense attorney? Why? Because he dealt a blow to your otherwise perfect trial record? Hmm. So, you did. But what I don't get is, why did you take his son under your wing afterwards? The son of your most bitter rival... That, my dear attorney, is none of your business. Well, womp womp. Tomorrow will be the last day of this trial. It's been a while since I've had a defense attorney last this long. You, don't ever say that again. Still, you will lose in the end. Miles Edgeworth will admit his own guilt. His guilt of 15 years ago, you mean? You're quite the researcher. If you've done your homework so well, then certainly you must understand. You know what Miles Edgeworth would tell the court tomorrow. You were right. He's banking on it. So Von Karma is going to bring up deal six in court tomorrow. Okay, well... What do we do now? Ah, uh, oh, we gotta present something. I don't wanna present that. Oh, I bet we have to. Don't give him that, Phoenix. Oh my God. Von Karma, have a look at this. Hmm. This was you, wasn't it? You instructed Yanni Yogi to commit murder. Yanni Yogi. How many years has it been since I heard him called by the have heard him called by that name? He's a fool. A fool? For what? I told him to burn it after he read it. So you did you snake So you admit it You you wrote Mr. Yogi this letter 
Yes, my dear defense attorney. Thank you for taking the trouble to bring it to me. Oh no, why did you give it to him? You've saved me from a lot of needless hassle. What? Nick! What is that thing? What thing? A stun gun! For defense! For self defense? Usually. Indeed. Six. 600,000 volts will course through your body like a dog touching an electric fence. 600,000. Oh, don't worry. People don't die from it, usually. Now, give me the letter. N no! No! Whoa, what are you? Nick, run! Oh god, Maya's dead. M Maya! Out of my way. Ah! Oh, Christ. Run, man, run. Well, he wasn't fast enough. Ugh. He got us. The letter's gone, of course. He took the DL6 evidence. All of it. Back to having no clues. W wait. Maya jumped first. Maya! Is she okay? M Maya! Oh no. Maya? M Maya! Open your eyes! M Maya! Huh? The letter! Did he take it? Huh? Uh, oh. Yeah. Are you okay? I... I couldn't stop him. I, I jumped as fast as I could. Well, one shot from that thing knocked me out cold. I'm useless. No, hon. I'm no good as a lawyer or as a medium. I can't even call my sister! Not even now, when we need her most. I... I wish I hadn't woken up at all. Oh, Maya... M Maya! Ah, There has to be some way I can help her. I better do something about her self-confidence first. Huh? Maya... She's holding something. What's that? A bullet? Deal six evidence. Evidence number seven, taken from the heart of Gregory Edgeworth. I, I, I remember. When Karma was holding this when Maya jumped him. We have evidence! Uh, I'll prove it to you, Maya. You're most definitely not useless. I'll prove it to you in court tomorrow. I do want to just save real quick. Ooh, to be continued! Yes! Boom! Yeah, let's save. Final day. And I think that is where I'm going to leave it for there. Uh, leave it for now. Ah, uh, so, thank you all so much for coming along with my, um, to this journey with me. And soon we'll be on the last day of trial. Let's fucking go! Ah, uh, so of course, thank you all so much for watching. Thank you all for coming along with this journey with me. Uh, thank you, Chief. I, I'm gonna try to say your name. Chiefner? Chiefner? 57? I'm so sorry. <laughs> uh, Chief, thank you so much for the raid and for the follow. Uh, thank you, Page Town. Thank you, Gami. Thank you, Chief. Thank you, everyone who chatted and everyone who is lurking and watching. Uh, thank you all so much for uh, continuing to support. I stream here on Twitch 
Uh, I would say Tuesdays and Saturdays, but let's be honest, it's more whenever day I can, usually around 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, I will post updates on my Discord channel and my YouTube channel of the same name, the community tab on my YouTube, um, on my YouTube in case anything happens. Um, I also upload the VODs to my YouTube channel of the same name, Nile Light. Uh, thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you guys next time. Goodbye! Mwah!